Hello everybody, I hope you're doing well. I'm going to be sharing a DVD collection and I got the idea from Sabrina's World. So I'm going to tag her in it. Uh, so I'm going to start off with the movie collection that I have. And we're going to go from the first row down. So the first DVD is I Am Legend. I haven't seen this. Yet somehow it's in my collection. It's with Will Smith. I'm not necessarily a fan of his per se, but I don't know why I have this in my collection. I couldn't say. I must have gotten it somewhere on, I don't know. Um, I am a fan of the Rocky Balboa series. Um, so, this is one DVD set that I've had in my collection for a while. Born Supremacy is also good. So good. If you haven't seen Person of Interest, it's really good. This is the third season. This is with Jim Cavazel. And there's one actress who's been in a lot of Tyler Perry movies, and she was in this series. It's the complete third season. There's Where the Red Thumb Grows. I have a really eclectic base of DVDs. This is an oldie, but a goodie. If you're into the classics, there is Roman Holiday with Gregory Peck. And Audrey Hepburn. I keep wanting to say Cary Grant, but it's Gregory Peck, and he's really good in this. I also like Audrey Hepburn. I think they both have great on-screen chemistry together, which makes this movie stand out. If there was any other cast, I don't think it would translate as well. I think the combination of the cast and just everything else made this movie into a classic. There's no specific order. Carrie Grant's The Amazing Adventure. This is a no thinking movie. I just put it on if I want background noise. Beside Me Adventure is an interesting one. Um, it's kind of like the Titanic but there's a lot of 1970s, I would say, A-listers who were in this. And Gene Hackman is the most notable. It's, I haven't seen this in ages, but it's about a ship that sinks and people are trying to escape. That's the gist. Veronica Mars. With Kristen Bell, it's a good whodunit. So if you get a chance to watch this one, it's a good one. And I quite like it. This is one of my all-time favorites. It's The Heiress with Olivia de Havilland, Montgomery Cliff, and Ralph Richardson. It's really good. It's one of those obscure movies that was notable at the time, and it's a really great black noir film. It's so good. She does such a good job playing the role that every time I watch it, I love it. There's The King's Speech. It's interesting how many of these are on streaming sites, and then... Usually, it's the classics that aren't available on streaming sites. I have a hard time finding the Rocky, the Rocky Balboa on streaming sites. Rocky 2, there's Star Trek. First Trekkies. Never seen this one. It's in my list because I'm a Heath Ledger fan. Never seen this one. 
is just sitting on the shelf waiting to be watched. Lego Batman. This, that's an old one. Oh, this one's good. This is High Society by Bing Crosby, Grace Kelly, and Frank Sinatra. Frank Sinatra and Bing Crosby often were in films together and another one who worked with Crosby is Louis Armstrong. He's also in this movie. I really like Philadelphia Story and this one is just a great film to put in the background or to fall asleep to. I find old movies very relaxing. Next up whoops, is Footloose with Kevin Bacon. Another oldie but a goodie. So if you haven't seen this, it's it's good. Classic. And I haven't seen it in a while, so Doctor Who, second, fourth, first. This is before it was available in UK. Um, Netflix special edition, Christmas. My favorite seasons are with David Tennant and Christopher Eccleston as Doctor Who. I like Matt Smith. He's pretty good too. Elizabeth Town, Orlando Bloom, and Claire Danes. It's a chick flick. I got this one for a gift. This is again the Born Identity, Born Ultimatum, um, with Matt Damon. And then this is a Canadian flick called Jane of Lantern Hill. I grew up with. Um, Canadian television, so it has like Canadian casting on it. Sarah Polly, a lot of Canadian names. Colleen Dewhurst, which who is a Canadian actress to, who starred on Anne of Green Gables, and this is Jane of Lantern Hill. It's another one to put on in the background when I'm doing homework or when I'm doing like an essay. Happy days. So nostalgic. Um, that one is the third season. Men in Black 1 and 2. I used to watch the series for background sound. There are specific shows that could be considered cringeworthy now, but they make excellent background sound. Um, like this movie. Uh, just like heaven. Amazing background sound. If you're getting work done. And you thrive on background sound to block everything out. This one is a series called Christy, The Vernon Shirley, a lot of classics. Waking Night Divine, Freaky Friday, um, Interstellar, another great one. Again, in no specific order. Monsters. And then we're going to go down to the second row. A lot of, this is the homework. Christmas shoes, it's a good holiday one. Take the lead. I don't know, I don't have much to say about this one. I don't have much to say about it at all. The Philadelphia story is so good. James Stewart is always amazing. And then there's Cary Grant. These two are just dynamite on screen. And then you have Catherine Hepburn. A lot of A-listers. Um, and that's why this movie is special. And it's, again, I love a good oldie to just put on in the background. And this one is Napoleon Dynamite. This one is Pixar Shorts. I got a lot of these as gifts. 
this one's Guess Who's Coming for Dinner. Guess Who's Coming to Dinner by, uh, I don't know who the director is, a Stanley Kramer production. And Spencer Tracy was in this, Sydney Port Portier, I love him. And then Catherine Hepburn, just a great classic with just amazing talent, Sydney Portier. You can't get any better than that. It's just so good. And this one is The Queen with Helen Mirren. Gone with the Wind, a classic. One of those controversial ones. The Golden Girls. This series is really good. Chuck, if you ever get a chance to watch it. Um, it's a really good series about a nerd who works at like this um, computer store and he turns into a super spy. Uh, now the now the series could be considered cliche, but back then it was actually quite original when it was released. It's really good, so I highly recommend it. Sister Act. With Whoopi Goldberg, Arsenic and Old Place, with Cary Grant. This is a movie that Cary Grant actually, let me just pull it out. Cary Grant actually thought he did poorly in, um, because he didn't like how zany he got in some roles. I thought he did really well in it. This is the greatest collection of holiday movies, Christmas in Connecticut, A Christmas Carol, The Shop Around the Corner. It happened on Fifth Avenue, an old one but a good one, Never Been Kissed, The Muppets. What is this one? Return to Me with Mini Driver. I'm a big Mini Driver fan and David Duchovny is also always good. I'm not a fan of rom-coms, but every now and then sometimes I like, want a rom-com with some um, random cast that you don't hear from anymore, like, you don't really hear of many dri driver acting in rom-coms. The Muppets, Take Manhattan, this one is so good, The Ghost to Mrs. Muir by Rex Harrison and Jean Tierney, it was also a TV series, it's just a really great black and white. And if you're in the mood to relax and you want something melancholic or like bittersweet, this one is it. While you're sleeping can be streamed on Disney Plus. A lot of these can be streamed. This one is a good one. It's called Morning Glory. And the reason I watched it is Diane Keaton and Harrison Ford. Otherwise, I wouldn't really be interested. Um, the Muppets Christmas Carol. An Affair to Remember. Sergeant New York. Gary Cooper reminds me of Ger Gregory Peck a little bit. And he was in Sergeant New York. It's a good one. Um, the Mentalist. Another really good series. The Big Bang Theory, when I watched it. This is the complete second season. Then there's Dirty Dancing. Patrick Swayze and then Jennifer Grey. The Preacher's Wife. Who is this one? Winnie Houston. And Denzel Washington. I haven't seen this in ages. A lot of these ones I haven't seen in a long time. I'm a big Tyler Perry fan. I have my days where I just want to watch it. Um, maybe it goes to jail. And Chuck again. I'll just put this back with the rest of the series. Oh. Apologize for the. This is a handheld video. Uh, the Princess Bride. Forrest Gump. This is one movie you can get on Netflix, I believe. 
I can always watch this one. It's so good. This is called The Family That Prays. It's a Tyler Perry movie. She's been on a lot. The main... The, he usually hires get a good cast. Um, let's see who's in here. That is Kathy Bates. You can't go wrong. And she was on Desperate Housewives. A lot of them he gets are really good. Um, I have to be in the mood to watch Tyler Perry. So if I want something light, this is The Last Holiday with Queen Latifah. And this is The Holiday with Cameron Diaz. We're going to go down to the next room. Like I said, there's a lot of eclectic um, mix of movies here. Okay, so next we're going to move into Audrey Hepburn, the set. And this has Sabrina, Roman Holiday, Breakfast at Tiffany's, and all of which are really good. This is a series that is really good. It's Lois and Clark, The New Adventures of Superman. I think Terry Thatcher is the definitive Lois Lane. She's so good at, at the role. And then Dean Clark was Superman. This was a show in like the 90s. So if you're into 90s TV shows, you're going to love this series. It's just, there's something so nostalgic about it. Okay. And then we're getting into I Love Lucy for background noise. Um, when I'm doing assignments, I like to put on oldies. And then there's Happy Days, background noise again. Um, this was season one. There is Eureka, which is a TV series. And this one's pretty good. And to get the gist, it's basically a small town with a big secret. That's the first season. Random Passage. There's IQ with Meg Ryan. Do you remember Meg Ryan? When she was Hollywood's... Um, she was Hollywood's sweetheart back in the day. I don't know what's become of her. Gladiator. Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Is this the old one or the new one? Oh, this is the new one. I am not a fan of Johnny Depp's interpretation of Willy Wonka. I really like the Charlie and the Chocolate Factory from the 1970s. That was a good one. Tyler Perry's Why Did I Get Married? Also good for background noise. I can do bad all by myself. Another Tyler Perry flick. I have to have my moments where I'll watch it. Diary of a Mad Black Woman. Now this is what I'm talking about. This is the definitive Willy Wonka, and the, for me, the definitive version. Every Easter, I watch this. Ten Commandments and Ben-Hur. I really like Gil Brenner. I like Charlton Heston. You can't go wrong because of how much effort they put into making this film. This was back in a time where there were no green screens. Everything was made with a hundred percent of studio and just big budget blockbuster so good and then we have pride and prejudice with colin first this is again the definitive pride and prejudice i do like the one with kira knightley i was pleasantly surprised with it this one is my favorite it's long it has everything um, that you can want out of a movie about Pride and Prejudice. It just has everything. It is everything. Colin Firth is perfect in this. So we're moving down to the next row. The Animated Highway Grinch Stool Christmas. Parks and Recreation. Another Golden Girls. 
I haven't seen this one in a long time. Um, Marina O'Hara was in a film called How Green Was My Valley. And I don't, I haven't seen it in so long. I don't really know what to say about it because I haven't seen it in a long time. This one is amazing. Andy Griffith was in this one and he, of course, was on the Andy Griffith show. This is called The Face in the Crowd. It is absolutely phenomenal. He did such an amazing job in getting out of his typecast and he really shone in this film. Patricia Neal is quite good in it as well. And just really stood out as being a underrated film. And we're going to move next to a collection by Sidney Poitier. And he was in Something of Value, Edge of City, Patch of Blue is my favorite. He was phenomenal in this film and just in all of them in general. And then Blackboard Jungle. Um... Once Upon a Time, which you can watch on Disney Plus, The Help, and then Stardust, Claire Danes, Michelle Pfeiffer, Robert De Niro, amazing cast, just absolutely amazing, such a good movie, Twister, an oldie, very cheesy, but if you're in the mood for it, it can be really good. Walk the Line by Johnny Cash. Singing in the Rain. Firefly. Serenity. I'm going to move a little faster now because I have to go to work. And then there's Miyazaki, which is now on Netflix. It wasn't originally Castle in the Sky, The Secret World of Arietti, and there's Alice in Wonderland. See, when I got these, like Disney Plus wasn't a thing, so you just had to get the DVD of it. Um, my, to my neighbor Totoro's, shows you how much of a fan I am of it. Um, the Secret World of Arietti. Ponyo. Another goodie. The Gentleman's Agreement with Gregory Peck. I haven't seen this one. And then Kiki's Flying Delivery Service. This will give you a major nostalgia. Um, if you're into Wonderworks or if you were around for that era. Um, this is the Silver Chair, the Chronicles of Narnia, before Disney ever made their franchise of it. Um, it's a British version of the Chronicles of Narnia. Then we moved down, and there was an old show about someone who had Down Syndrome, and it was really ahead of its time in terms of how inclusive it was. Like, this show um, was really ahead of its time because no one really had any TV shows, and they still don't, that have individuals with Down Syndrome on it. Um, and so I really enjoyed this series. It's called Life Goes On, and I hope they release all the seasons because I will buy it. It's actually one of those series that I thought was quite progressive in terms of themes and development and it's there's a reboot in the works i was really impressed with how it was written in terms of how progressive the writers were for the time when dealing with topics like aids down syndrome aids was one of the bigger topics of the day um and the show tackles some of those issues. Friends, um, like I said, all of these were not available on Netflix, so we had to watch them on DVD. Another old one, Royal House on the Prairie. I grew up with the series, a little bit cheesy, 
not gonna lie, but if I want something very nostalgic from the 70s and the 80s, I throw on Michael Landon. It kind of reminds me of Tyler Perry's stuff. Um, and I throw on Little House on the Prairie. If I want something that's family oriented versus action or anything like that, I just throw on Little House on the Prairie. I love it. Within, like, I like, I have my moments where I want to watch something really nostalgic. And then I just throw on black and white, film no, like film noir, or anything from television in the era, era of my childhood I'll throw on. So yeah, these are my DVD collections. The rest is all streamable. There are surprisingly some classics that you cannot get on streaming. Um, so... I think I would still buy DVDs for the ones that I can't stream. Thank you so much for watching. This was a long one, and I hope that you, that you enjoyed the DVD collection. This was an idea from Sabrina's World. Thanks so much for watching, and have a great day.